Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to have part 5 of our beginner to 2k guide. And as promised, this will be a rec analysis episode. So I'm going to be featuring two games that I played on this account. And I'm going to be going through them and showing off some of the ideas as well as my thought process while playing them. Before hopping right into the video though, I do have a couple announcements to make. So the first one is that I am actually hosting a tournament alongside Taro. The title is Adopt a Noob Cup. So the premise of the tournament is simply uh, a beginner player teaming up with a more intermediate or advanced player, so it's going to be 2v2. Uh, and the idea is for the newer players to get a little bit more experience uh, and hopefully get some, you know, coaching from some of the, you know, more advanced players and, you know, get a feel for a semi-competitive environment. The prize of the tournament is an hour of free coaching from either myself or Tato, so it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty good reward there, I think. Um, as far as like the signups, it's going to be taking place in both of, of our discords. So I'll link them in the description to so both my discord and Tato's discord. To play, you have to join both discords. All the information will be there. I'm also going to link the AOE zone post uh, that we made about it. So you can get some additional information off of that one as well. Uh, it's open to everyone and it's going to be played on Vubli. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. It's going to be a good experience. Just to give you an idea of Viper and Lan already signed up, uh, as well as several other players are taking a look into it. So. There's definitely a lot of top players that are interested in this, so if you want to have a chance to play with or against them, no matter what level you are, I recommend you guys sign up or at least check it out. Alright, so for my second announcement here, I'm 50, or we're 15 days away from the release of DE. So with this guide, I figured I need about another 15 days, like 15 games, if I win all of them, to actually reach 2k. So what I'm thinking is, I can do one guide a day from now until DE comes out, and we can actually finish this guide out pretty nicely, I think in 20 episodes. So in exactly 20 episodes, we can finish this beginner to 2k guide. So my plan would be, I'm gonna post nothing else on YouTube. I'm gonna post a guide a day or an episode a day. And hopefully by the end of the 15 days, we'll have hit 2k, we'll finish the guide. And then when DE comes, we have a fresh start with a new game. And that should be pretty exciting. So let me know what you guys think in the chat uh, about the tournament and about uh, my new kind of YouTube plan. And hopefully it's gonna be awesome. And uh, without further ado, let's hop right into this video. Alright, so for this first game, let me just double check that I'm <clears throat> indeed talking. Yeah, perfect stuff. I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit paranoid. I uh, don't want to be muted for these videos. Alright, so for this first game here, I'm going to be playing uh, up against um, Alex El Papi. He is a 1600 player uh, from Chile. So it was definitely a solid game, and um, let's just go right into it here. I'll introduce the maps and the civs. Uh, so I'm here playing in blue as the Japanese. My opponent is in red playing as Somalians. Um, so right away I'm thinking Japanese versus Somalians. How do I, you know, talk about this matchup? Well, I'm thinking Japanese have a great early game. They save 50 wood on each mining camp and lumber camp as well as their mill. So right away I'm saving, you know, a fair bit of wood in the early game. They also get really strong infantry, so potentially men at arms. But remember when I said we're gonna leave men at arms till after episode five, and so I've, I won't go be going those. So I might either do scouts or archers. Japanese can do both, so I've got some options available because they do get bloodlines, so their scouts are pretty decent. All right, as far as as far as Malians go, they are a super flexible sieve. Good eco bonus. They've got archers as options. They've got scouts as options. They can go forward. They can do pretty much everything. So I'm really gonna have to scout my opponent here and try and figure out exactly you know what he's going to go for and react based on that because i can't really tell what he's going to go for based on only his sieve all right so let's quickly take a look at my map here i've got back wood uh back stone back gold that might come in handy uh forward gold for berries which you know if i get rushed that could be quite dangerous and i've got a gold on the side i could potentially wall up this side uh, although my front is quite open so and we'll see how to set a play but my map is okay uh, overall my opponent's map here, he's got a gold on the front on a hill, so I can easily, you know, harass that one. His wood is off to the side, berries off to the side, kind of in the front though. And he's got this back gold, which could come in handy as well. Uh, it's easy wall on the left side, uh, but down the middle he's very open, alright? So, it's going to be a very aggressive game. We're kind of close to each other here, so we'll see how it plays out. Alright, so I'm just going to go around my regular builder here. Let's fast forward the dark age, because nothing, you know, too interesting happens here. We might as well save some time on it. So I talked about the matchup a little bit as well as <clears throat> the you know map positions and everything like that. And now we're going up to Feudal Age. So I am indeed going for a 21 pop uh, scout rush. But you're going to see here that my opponent is going for something pretty different. So let's go from my point of view. And let's see how I scout and where I scout. One thing I will point out though is notice how I'm scouting. 
I'm scouting in a way that I'm never going to run into CC. For example, I'm seeing a hill, I'm going to scout on the hill. I see a woodline, I scout near it. I see a cliff, I scout near it. Basically, I'm scouting in places where the TC can never be. For example, I'm coming close to the edge of the map, I will scout near the edge of the map. I'm going to scout near the hill. The idea is never to scout on flat land. So I'm never going to run from here to here, for example, because that could be TC territory. So that's just a nice little tip to avoid the TC with the scout. But now I actually didn't scout it until here. I see the forward come in. So the forward is here. I see four villagers. My opponent is planning a tower rush. All right, my opponent is planning a tower rush. He's on stone. He's got four villagers forward. And this is when I have to make a decision. So it's time to pause and really talk about you know, what my options are to defend this tower rush. So put yourself in my shoes. You've just seen four um, villagers that are going forward, and I kind of made a mistake. My scout is kind of offside. He's not in a good position to defend this tower rush. So my first step right away is to bring my scout from his base back to my base. That should be my number one priority. Aside from that, I also have to make a couple other decisions. I have to look around my map and see what can this tower rush hit and what am I kind of worried about in terms of getting my resources denied. So the first thing I like to look at is my gold positions because that's the most important thing. So I've got a gold in the front, he can take that away. With a tower like here or here, that gold can get easily denied. So do I want to fight for it or not? Well, the answer is actually no. I don't mind if he takes this gold away because I've got this gold in the back. Remember how I scouted the gold in the back? That's what I'm going to use instead of this one. So my mindset right now is I don't care if he takes away this gold. I'm going to let him do that, waste his tower, and I'm just going to use the gold in the back. My second thing is stone. Stone is very important to build defensive towers. He's got one on the front here that he can deny, but I've got one in the back, and that's very important as well. So I've got back stone, back gold, and I've got back wood. So in truth, this tower rush shouldn't do anything as long as I don't overreact to it. So now my response will be to just try and delay the damage, let him take away the front resources, and just try and stall out the towers. If he comes too close, like he puts a tower, maybe like on my barrage or right here, too aggressive, then I'll counter tower. But if he builds towers out here, just to deny my main gold, I'm going to let him, all right? So let's see how this plays out, uh, and let's see how I end up reacting to this tower rush. So right away here, this is what I see. First step, as usual, I'm gonna bring my scout all the way back. All right, and, oh, sorry, didn't mean to pass forward. There he is, tower comes up, and, well, he is gonna deny my gold, or almost, he's gonna deny my stone, but I don't really mind that, and I'm just gonna go for my stable. Again, he is doing nothing, so there's no reason I should change my strategy, because this tower, like I said, kind of does nothing so it's like i'm doing a regular scout rush here i should definitely not alter my strategy i should just be kind of careful about what he can do with his tower rush so first step is i chase away his scout just a small advantage i can get nothing crazy um and i get my defensive stable and as usual look at this nothing changes i've got my villas on wood i'm farming i'm taking my berries nothing's changed so far all right let's see where he goes next he's gonna walk his villas around ideally he wants to tower rush or tower my berries next, but he cannot overextend. Because if he builds his other tower here, I can just pick off his builds with my scouts that are coming up. I've got already two scouts. Third should be on the way quite soon. If he towers very close to his tower, I'll let him. Notice how I'm not even reacting to this. I see it, but I'm just not reacting to it. So I keep my scout out here. I could counterattack with two, but two is not really enough to do damage damage. I'd recommend waiting for three. I don't want you guys to spread yourself too thin, trying to multitask at his base and your base. So wait till three scouts, then move out. Uh, that's my kind of general rule for lower level players. If you're feeling confident though, definitely you can move out with two. That's fine. All right, so as usual, like I, I can't stress this enough. I'm just doing my build. This tower rush is doing nothing. And a lot of players would overreact to it. Maybe do a counter tower here. They think, I can't let this happen. I'm just going to let him. I'm going to give him the space. I don't mind if he towers here. But right now, he's a little bit overextended. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I send my scouts. I push him back. I'm just buying myself some time. And look where his next tower will be. Look at that. It's again doing nothing. Because what are these towers hitting? Eight tiles. It can probably hit half this gold. This area here. I don't mind. I'm, I'm fine. Everything's safe. My build order is looking good. I can't really hit these villagers. They're too close to the tower. I'm going to counterattack with four scouts here. Let's see what I can find. Box formation stand ground on these scouts. And I'm looking at getting some picks, but... Again, I don't do any fancy micro try and block the bill. I'm just going to look around here uh, and look for some other bills to kill. So I'm going to back, wrap back around to the stone here. He walls it up. Nice play from him. But I find an opening so he's not able to wall it, And I'm able to do some damage. 
So I'm gonna get one bill here. I think I might get two bills. Yeah, notice I'm not doing any crazy micro here at all. So I get two bills there, and looking back at the tower rush again, still not doing much. I'm producing scouts normally, I'm using the gold in the back. And notice how I've ne I haven't counter towered, so I'm not gonna mine stone just yet. I only like to mine stone if I need to make my first tower. All right, he's making a barracks on the front. So right away I'm thinking I might need a range if he starts making spearmen. So keep that in mind. I'm still doing damage at his base with my scouts. All right. Oh, here I was just showing off some control group shenanigans. It's not too important though. I showed that off in the last video. <clears throat> All right, and now I see the spearmen. So right away he's making some spearmen. This is what he sees, by the way. All right, this, he's not. I've not let him go into my base, so he doesn't have too much vision here whereas if you go back to me I see pretty much the entire map I know exactly what he sees or where he's at I know exactly how to defend I'm making a range now I'm gonna get some skirmishes for the spearmen and remember four scouts can easily take out spearmen so don't be afraid to actually take fights like that with your scouts all right I'm making a fair bit of uh, scouts again he's walling in my stable I'm letting him because I don't really need it anymore I'm just gonna go for castle here and keep in mind all right let's just talk about this for a second here this stable is worth 175 wood. So if all these three towers and a barracks and three gates are all just to deny one stable or wall it in, he's spending like 500, maybe 600 or 700 resources here, not to mention the four bills idle forward, just to deny a building that costs 175 wood. If you think about it logically, you're gonna realize that when people come forward to tower you, a lot of times they're just trying to make you overreact. If you play calmly, they're not going to get an even exchange actually because it's very hard to get value out of towers which are such expensive buildings so just keep that in mind if you play calmly and if you realize you know what your map looks like and where you need to fight you'll have a lot of success and keep in mind if ever he overstepped or if ever he played really aggressive or if ever i had to take a fight i still have my defensive tower and i still have a lot of resources to invest into military at any point in feudal age all right so no one to take your battles no one to make your defense defensive tower and you'll be just fine all right so gonna let him again the common theme of this game i'm gonna let him wall in my stable i don't mind all right if he overextends on this side i could consider bringing my scouts back to try and kill these fills now i've got some skirmish with the spearmen now which is all nice again i i, I let him I'm, I'm not worried about this at all in fact i'll remake the stable later i really don't mind uh, I'd much rather counterattack him, and that's what I've been doing all game, pretty much. Alright, and again, no fancy micro. I'm completely against that. Just looking around, finding bills. I find this one here, and at home, say, tower coming up here. Again, it's doing nothing, and, and I feel bad saying this, you know, because it feels like his whole rush was ineffective. And you guys might be thinking, well, no, tower rushes, they usually kill me. But think about it. You know, the initial tower rarely takes away all your resources. So if you react properly to the first tower and then to the second and then to the third, you'll be in positions like this where all the towers are doing essentially nothing. All right. I'm up to cast stage now at 21 minutes, which is a very solid time. I've got scrims coming out to defend the spears. His towers are doing absolutely nothing to me. And I've got a lot of scouts active on the map. The KD is 9 to 0. I'm yet to lose a unit. And all I've done is just not take fights. All I've done is just not take fights. This is very important. And then now when he overextends, now is when I move in and I start taking out his units here. The scrims and scouts going in. And I've dealt with the tower rush. He's got no more forward villagers. I didn't I didn't counter tower. I didn't move any of my villas to fight. I just let him. I gave him the space that didn't matter. All right, now I'm just gonna be moving out. And I think we'll see the end of the game here soon. Because think about it, I'm in Castle Age. He's still nowhere near clicking up the Castle Age. No gold in the bank. So it's gonna be pretty smooth sailing. Notice how I remade my stable to make knights. I don't care about this one. I'll remake the stable. We make another one as well. All right, as usual, gonna get a TC out here. We'll probably look for my third TC very soon. <clears throat> and I'll just be counterattacking him with scrims and scouts. And I expect him to resign any second now. And there's the GG call because he has no answer to my scouts. I'm in Castle Age, and his rush, frankly, did nothing. So just to quickly recap the game. Um, the most important thing is scouting what your opponent's gonna do. If I had seen this tower rush come in a little bit sooner, I could have prepared a little bit more by bringing my scout back to defend right away. So I got a bit lucky that I was able to scout it. That he walked into my line of sight. Uh, it would have been tricky if I if he hadn't done that. Uh, and then other than that, recognize the threats. That's the best thing I can tell you guys. Recognize the threat. If it's dangerous, then fight it with those counter tower. Invest a lot into the defense. If the towers aren't doing a whole lot, 
then don't fight it give them some space delay because the more you delay the more advantage you get because you have four bills all, all your bills always working whereas he's got four bills that are kind of idle because they're building towers instead of gathering resources so this is pretty much how to defend tower rush guys and yes they come in different uh you know shapes they can be you know men at arm tower rush um uh, you know inca villager tower rush stuff like that but as far as like the standard tower rush the four build tower rush that's very common at lower levels this is pretty much how you defend it. It's all about being smart and kind of like delaying the opponent's push until you're able to counterattack and eventually gain advantage um, and taking other gold and stones uh, around the map to pretty much make the things he's denying uh, a waste. Because he's denying the stone, this gold, sorry, and the stone, but it's a waste because I already have those resources in the back. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully that game was helpful. Uh, but don't go anywhere because we've still got one more game here. <clears throat> All right, so let's go here. So save and record games and it's gonna be game two. So this one is quite interesting I actually played this one on stream and I'm playing against uh, Zvizvek here He is from Germany, I believe and he is rated 1680. So this is actually, you know, a decent level game. We're getting close to 1700 here And this game is quite interesting because I actually make a few mistakes here and I think this is the first game of the series where I actually make significant amount of mistakes and and pretty big mistakes so and i get punished for a couple of them so let's go ahead and you know run through them in this game what you have to watch out for is how i scout my opponent and how i defend his meta arm rush because in this one he goes meta arm rush and i'm going to go scouts and i'm going to scout it defend against it and then you know expand afterwards all right so i'm going to be playing here in the blue as spanish um small mistake here they take a sheep here so it's really a beginner guide look at me making some mistakes uh, that's not a big one though. I make bigger ones later on. All right, so I've got two woods here close by. My gold's off to the side in a pretty good position. I've got an easy wall, pretty easy wall, and I've got barbarians in the back. So I have a really good map here with Spanish. I'll probably be going for some scouts. My opponent here is uh, playing in the red as the Celts, and so Celts is a really good infantry civ. They can also play, you know, archers. Uh, not the best scout civ because they don't have bloodlines. Uh, but we'll see what he'll go for. Uh, for me. Spanish scouts with bloodlines is pretty solid. They can't really go for archers because obviously we don't get crossbow and castle age. So Spanish archer is not really the best. All right, let's just fast forward through the beginning of the dark age, but not too much because I have to show you guys my scouting. All right, so take a look here. Before moving to my opponent's base, I've seen literally everything on my map. I've seen both stones. I've seen one gold, two golds, three golds, and I've seen where I want to wall. I've seen literally everything about my map. Look at how clean the scouting is. And then I move out to scout my opponent. It's very important that you guys scout like this because again, it's going to give you the best results over a long you know, period of games. All right, so just going to continue scouting here. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to scout on hills near golds. And I don't want to run into a CC pretty much. So even if it takes me a little bit longer to scout his map, it's still the safest way to do it. So I recommend you get into this habit. Uh, if, you, if you're always the guy who loses the scout to the enemy town center, this is what you got to do. So you watch out for that. All right, so I'm scouting through the map here. I'm up to Feudal Age. I do, I do, this is my first mistake. I up at 20 pop, sorry. I up at 20 pop with a save with no early game eco bonus. So I'm going to have really bad scout production. So I should have went 21 pop. That's my first mistake. I played this on stream. So my excuse is that I was distracted. All right, so here I am. I scouted near his you know, back of the map. I saw all the hints, and then finally I walked near the town center, but obviously I know it's there. Um, so no harm, no foul. I also did see him take gold, so now I immediately, I think he might be doing men at arms. I don't scout the barracks, but I scout the gold. So I think either men at arms or archers. I always assume men at arms because that rush comes in first and it's more dangerous. So right away, this is how I react to men at arms. I make my stable defensively. So kind of like walling towards my TC. He is blocking me being annoying here, no big deal. And I also wall towards my TC. So you're gonna see some walls coming up, up here, from here to here, wall this side, and make my stable defensively. This makes it so if men at arms come in, they are forced to funnel through my TC. So now you're thinking, okay, well we haven't scouted the men at arms. Where are they on the map? Uh, they're actually coming through here, but I don't know about that. But regardless, since I scouted that he's on gold, I'm just gonna build my base like this. And I lose very little for doing so. I'm just gonna protect my berries, only dangerous area is the wood line, but since it's so close to my TC, I don't actually mind. All right, so again, I'm protecting everything else here. <clears throat> so again, this is what I see. I'm waiting for the rush. I'm gonna bring my scout back in a second here, as soon as I uh, scout it. 
I see the barracks here, so I'm thinking right away, men at arms, and there it is. Alright, so now when the men at arms are coming in, I've got to watch out. And look at this. He can't deal any damage with the men at arms because I've, or just because of the way I've laid out my base, I'm not fighting them with villagers, with scouts. I'm just walling up. I careful with the overtrop there. I, I was definitely careful. And I'm just zoning him out of my base. And at home, just continuing with my scout rush. Uh, build order. So, farms, few on wood. Standard stuff. Nothing crazy here. Okay, so I get some hits, but nothing too crazy, like I said. Continue walling up. And eventually I'll break out of these walls and I'll wall a little bit further out. But for now, this is completely fine. Alright, so my next step here to think about is how does he follow this up? So he's doing men at arms now, I'm doing scouts. Eventually he'll want to get some archers out. And in fact, he already has double range out. Um, so, the biggest thing for me to do now is to think about my skirmisher transition. I don't want to make the range too early because then I won't be able to afford like, skirms and farms. But then, I don't want to make it too late because then the archers will actually do damage. So the perfect timing is, in my opinion, right around like 13, 30 or 14 minutes for your range and then a blacksmith right away. So here I am. Notice how I'm making it a bit further away to protect my gold. I'm not making it too close inside. And again, I'm just letting him, similar to the tower rush, I'm letting him hit my barracks. It's not doing anything for me. So I don't have to, you know, fight these. Instead, I like to counterattack. So let's see what I can find in this counterattack. He's well defended, he's walled up, so probably not much. I still look around though. Uh, I like to do this with my scouts. Kind of run around, see if there's any weak villagers, any targets. Um, I, I'm not going to find too much here though. <clears throat> so again, running around. Nothing too crazy. I find this one archer, I pick him off, and then I just run back. So just a small counterattack. He defends it pretty well, and I'm fine to go back here. One thing I will note, and this is a big problem amongst... Uh, lower level players look at the difference in bills it's 32 bills for me and 27 for him and fun fact no bills died this game so that means that he's got 20 he's got five bills idle time i'm playing i think pretty much like perfectly in terms of idle time maybe a few seconds here and there but he's down five bills of idle time and each bill is 25 seconds so he's got 25 times five seconds idle time unless he has wheelbarrow and then i'm mistaken then it's only two but regardless, he's got a lot of idle time with his town center. So definitely keep that in mind when playing. See my, you know, guides, I always say, before taking fights, make sure you're queuing villagers. And get into the habit of always queuing villagers to avoid this happening, alright? So definitely one thing to keep in mind. Um, and let's continue on here. So now that he is going for archers, I already have the skirm transition going. Fast blacksmith. Obviously, with skirms, only one range and one blacksmith right away. I rarely make two ranges in Feudal Age when going for skirmishers after Scout Rush. Alright, so now I'm going to clean up the Men at Arms because now they're forcing me to repair, so now I actually have to clean them up. So let's go ahead and clean them up here. And I'm well prepared for the archers that will come in any second now. Notice how I'm rewalling a little bit further, deleting my walls that were kind of cramming me in, and uh, just going to be going up to Castle Age is my next uh, plan here. <clears throat> Alright, so he will be coming in here uh, from the side, so let's see what he can do with this army. So he shows here, and this is right away. It's not necessarily a mistake from his part, but it's something I can take advantage of. My army is stronger, I've got more skirmishers, and I hit a spear not doing much. So him showing here is allowing me to get free units. So I would just go ahead and chase down his army the whole time. And at this point, he should have ran back. Instead, he makes a mistake, he continues trying to attack, and in the end, that costs him a lot of army. I cost him a lot of army. I see him, and he, he hurts a little bit of my bills, but he doesn't do a whole lot, and I just chase down these units, and he ends up losing all of them. So he's doing wheelbarrow now. Take a look at the difference in bills after it's done. Probably still going to be like 5 or 6. And I'm going to be up to Castellage at 21, 26, a reasonable time. A little bit slow, because I'm playing a bit, a, bit more, uh, a bit too much wood, but it's not too bad. Alright, so pretty much the same build as last game. Scouts into skirmishers here. My plan in Castle Age would be to go two stable knights. If you're against a stable like Britons or Ethiopians that have a really strong archers and not the best knights, you could consider going uh, two ranged skirmishers and only one stable knights. Um, so it's up to you. But uh, if you're against a civ like, I don't know, Celt or something that could easily do a knight transition or a siege workshop transition, I recommend going um, two stable knights and only the skirmishers in Feudal Age just to defend yourself. Alright, so now I do something interesting with my scouts. So, I first check if he's open. He's not, so instead of just doing nothing with my scouts, I trade my skirmishers here, and with my scouts, I just go ahead and scout the map. 
So I send them on either side of the map and I scout the edge of the map. This does two things. This makes my score go really high. So way higher than it should be because of scouting. So that kind of sights out my opponents. And also it lets me scout the relics as well as the, you know, the extra golds or stones on the sides of the map. So very good stuff for me. When I get to Castle Age, I drop down two DCs right away, as I usually do. And now I'm just going to be going for two stable knights. So my opponent is just going to be going for double range archers. He's also going to get some talent centers, but he is making some mistakes. This TC is too crammed. It's on his main gold, which I never recommend. It's really crammed inside his base. And so this is the problem with not having map control. With walling yourself in too tight, is that you end up building too close together and not having the space to probably boom. Whereas me, with full map control and scouting the sides, look at my TCs. It's a wonderful spread. I'm on a second stone, a second gold, sorry. I'm on another wood line. It's just, it looks a lot cleaner. And I think that's what you should keep in mind when going for your town centers. Why is he trying to raid me here? And every time he shows up at my base, I'm basically thinking, okay, this is free units. I've got full map control and I'm going with a more mobile unit. So when he shows up, it's a mistake from him. It's not really his fault. Like he has to do this to try and get come back in the game. But I've just laid it out in a way where I can always punish him moving out. It's very oppressive. I'm up 15 villagers because I got my TCs earlier. And it's just going to snowball from here. One thing I want to talk about here is look at my look at my vision. And I've got map control because I've got a more mobile unit. I'm going to take advantage of it. One way to do that, a really underrated way, is to collect relics. So I'm going to make some monks and collect some relics. Another way to do that is to claim the hills. Getting siege workshops either here, here, or here can be really good. I can also get a siege workshop here if I want to go for a really forward push and punish these two golds. Uh, actually, a viewer in my chat actually recommended me or asked me if it's a good idea to go for a forward siege in this position. And I responded yes. A forward siege and a very aggressive push uh, at this point will be a good decision. But nonetheless, I'm making use of my map control, getting relics, booming up three TCs, and I'm actually going to mine some stone now. Potentially, we'll get a castle up when I hit the Imperial Age. It's something I like to do when I'm up on three TCs. Siege workshop and monastery defense. Remember, I'm hitting the objectives I need uh, in Castle Age. Here's one of my mistakes. So one of my big mistakes this game is that I keep my knights defensively, and I never catch him moving across the map. I only catch him when he's at or close to my base, and he's able to micro me away. So look at that, he micros me, gets into a corner, and I run back, and I'm always just idling my knights. What I should be doing is running back and forth, like around his base, to kind of try and catch the ar uh, archers as they move out, and that way I'm always safe at home. But now I'm giving him a lot of, a lot of free space, because I'm, look at me, I'm always camping at home. So this is, don't do this guys, this is a big mistake. You've got a mobile unit, you have to use it, and kind of patrol around the map, whereas me, I'm giving him free opportunities to move out and back to his base, alright? So this is my probably my biggest mistake here. <clears throat> alright, nothing much happens. I'm still at a 20 build lead, so I'm still in a comfortable position. Take a look at the resources here. He's still really far behind. He's finally moved out of his wa uh, little wall here, but it's still a little bit late. Um, although I do admire how he's being aggressive with his units. I think that's actually probably his best quality, uh, at least you know in my experience or in my opinion. That hit, his aggression was actually throwing me off a little bit, so definitely well played from him in that regard. Um, he could probably work on a lot on his eco and his villager idle time though. Alright, so finally I'm making some moves with my knights. I'm patrolling across the map, trying to catch his archers. Although I make another mistake here, I don't get town watch early enough. I don't, uh, you know, scout the map uh, too well or keep track of his army. And he ends up sneaking in on me here, past the scout's line of sights, and gets a lot of villagers. So. You know, a few mistakes for me this game, definitely, and I get punished for them. So here he is coming in, and a few deals go down right away. And this is just a this is just a pure mistake. This should never happen. Uh, I, I take a lot of damage here. Eight deals go down, something like that. And uh, I actually eject them. He does another smart move and actually just comes back in a second here. He comes back and kills even more villagers. So right now I'm I'm definitely feeling the heat. This is what he sees, and I take a lot of losses here. So. Again, uh, I'm making some mistakes here. It's definitely worth worth it to learn uh, from these mistakes as well. So he's kind of evened out the vote count, but I'm still up to the Imperial Age, and this just came down to me having the better Feudal Age. No, less out of time, um, you know, a little bit more damage with my scouts. I killed uh, an archer, kept him busy, and he ends up just calling the GG here when I'm up to the Imperial Age. Um, I will say what my last note was, since I had map control, I made use of it in Imperial Age by getting out a forward castle to take care of both his stones. And notice how I'm pushing out with 
even more production here. I've got seven stables, and my plan is to go for Cavalier as my main unit. Skirms would just tend to be my secondary unit, and I was going to plan a siege unit, either Onager or Siege Ram, to be my siege unit. So I was going to plan on doing the same combination of units I always do, which is one gold unit, which is your main unit, the thing you open with, one um, side unit, so a trash unit. Uh, skirm is really good. Halberdier could be good. Hussar could be good as a secondary unit. In this case, I chose Skirmisher, and then one siege unit. So it could be Trebs, it could be any uh, unit from the Siege Workshop. So that's pretty much it on this episode. In the first uh, game, we saw you know defending Tower Rush. Second game, we, def we saw defending Men at Arm Rush, and just kind of adapting and using map control in the mid game to try and counterattack my opponent and keep myself safe using vision and playing smart. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys think about wreck analysis. If you guys don't like them, I will not do them again. If you guys do like them, I'll do them every fifth episode, and we'll just continue this format until the end uh, of the series. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Drop a comment or like the video if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing for more content as well. And uh, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.